So I thought it would be a good idea to make a little mini series or a, a, a bunch of videos over the next little course of time on taking care of things in my tank other than my shrimps. And today we're going to kick it off with just your basic ram's horn snail. Let's check it out. Subscribe to my channel. Welcome back to Bob Moss Nano Tanks. So as I mentioned in the intro there, we're going to be talking about basic ram's horn snail care. Yes, yes, it's just as I thought. What? This is definitely a snail. Basically what to do when you get new ram's horn snails, how to keep them alive, uh, signs that they're not doing well, and some other stuff at the end. I'll, I'm not going to spoil it all here at the start for you. Make sure to smash the subscribe button, leave a comment below, hit the like, you know the drill, do all that stuff. So, ram's horn snails. Here, boy. Fetch. When you first get your ram's horn snails, the only thing you really have to worry about is temperature acclimating them. You don't have to drip acclimate anything like that. Just put the bag, you know, you're you're gonna get them in a bag, most likely. I hope you get them in a bag. I don't know what else. Hey, hello. Maybe a container. Whatever container they come in. You float it in the tank and temperature acclimate them so that the water is the same temperature. That's basically the only way you're going to kill them, besides chemically, is temperature shock. They can live in, oh, I'm gonna just spoil the rest of the video here. <laughs> they can live in basically any water condition. He just needed Water. And while the ram's horn snail, like most snails, does prefer a harder water environment, in the softer water you're just going to experience, like you can see here on these snails, the shell pitting is what they call it. Just little holes in the shell because there's not enough calcium, not enough nutrients in the water for them to properly produce the shell. So it's a little softer, they're a little more delicate. If you had some type of predator in the tank, you know, they're not going to be able to protect themselves because their shells are soft and pitted. But... <laughs> They'll still be able to survive, they'll still be able to reproduce in softer water tanks. You just might not see the same numbers as you would, say, in my Neocaridina tanks, which are hard water. Well, technically all my tanks are hard water, but these smaller tanks, they experience mad fluctuations, and the high organics will actually eat away at, like, your KH, which causes parameter swings, etc., etc. I think I've explained this before. So that's their survival. When you get them, you temperature acclimate them. You want to make sure they're in like a little bit of a harder water tank, but they can really live in anything. Oh, I forgot to mention, like I've actually had them live in a bucket of tap water. Just to see, I put like a handful of snails in a bucket of tap water and they live the chlorine and content in the tap water was not enough to kill them. The only thing that killed them with tap water was temperature fluctuations. If I put in hot or cold tap water, it would shock the snails and cause deaths, which is how I have some snail shells in here. Anyway, for ram's horn snails, things like lighting don't really matter. And honestly, you don't really need to uh, feed them extra. The point of them is to clean up the extra food that you do feed. So if you, if you happen to overfeed your fish or your shrimp, having the ram's horn snails in there will help prevent anything negative from happening. They'll be able to clean that up off the bottom of your tank or out of the feeding dish in my case. You can see them in here now, cleaning up the feeding dish. The shrimp are picking away at something. I fed them some nettle mix earlier today, so there might be some remnants and, I mean, there's some snowflake food and stuff, but... But yeah, the snails are cleanup crew, and the only reason you would ever want to or need to feed them extra food is if you want them to reproduce, because that's how they're going to reproduce, is once there's a surplus of food in the tank, they're like, oh, there's enough here to support other snails, let's make babies, and they make babies with each other. If there's not enough food there to support the other snails, I find they, they don't really reproduce, or, or when they do lay the egg sacs, when the babies hatch, they don't actually survive, because there's not enough of said supplementary food in the tank. Okay, 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 here we go, here we go, right here, right here. So the major issue with ram's horn snails is some people would consider them a pest snail. If you are slightly overfeeding the tank or if there's a decent amount of algae growth in there, they will reproduce, they will populate into the hundreds in your tank, even the thousands depending on the size. The bigger the tank, the harder they're going to be to control. So that's why I, I mentioned like don't feed them directly unless you want the population boom. Show you how to feed them. 
eat them. I have all the cans marked. A can in the morning and a can at night. Because they're going to repopulate regardless. And I mean, I, if you've watched my past videos, you would have seen like I've baited the snails out of these tanks. I've had to control the population in them manually with, with manual removal. And then I just put them into the other tanks. That's about it. If you have something like, I think it's a pea puffer, some certain types of fish will eat the snails if you pop them in. So if you have like a shrimp tank with snails and then a separate fish tank with bigger fish, you can throw your excess snails in there and they'll be taken care of, circle of life. You can kill them chemically, but things like fenbendazole don't really work. The only thing I found that really worked was overdosing Flourish Excel which is gonna kill other things in your tank. So to chemically kill the ramshorn snails is not something I would recommend if you have other livestock in the tank at all, or even, I just wouldn't really recommend it because even my plant life didn't react very well to the, the liquid carbon as they put it. The glutaraldehyde is what it's called, I think. And the final couple notes I have on the ramshorn snails are just some questions I've seen asked about them. One, yes, they get along with other snails. They're not a predatory species. They just eat detritus. And that leads into the second point. Two, they don't eat your live plants. They will only eat the melt and the dying parts of the leaves. People complain about them like eating frog bit, stuff like that, but they're just eating the already dying parts of your plants. And they're actually helping them. They're actually being a benefit to the plant life in your tank, at least. They're providing fertilizer with their poop and they're eating, they're eating off the dying parts so that it doesn't rot the plant anymore. So yeah, ramshorn snails do not eat live plants. I, I've seen a couple people say that they do and they, they don't. They just don't eat the living parts at least. If they're on the bottom of your frog bit or something like that, it's because it's already dying. It's already rotting underneath somehow, some way. I know frog bit, the leaves, they grow and they overlap. So that overlap will cause that bottom one to rot and the snail will get under there and eat it. And perhaps when that leaf has been eaten away and the snails are still there, it looks like they're eating that live one on top, but, but they're not. I promise, I swear, the ramshorn snails don't eat live plants for the hundred part. Yeah. So thank you so much for watching. Thanks for making it all the way to the end. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope that you found it informative. If you did, leave a comment below. If you didn't, leave a comment below. If you don't care, leave a comment below. Make sure to like this video. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, guys. Make sure to stay tuned for more care tips on the other stuff in my tanks. I mean, I think at this point it's gonna be plants, but then I will still have my shrimp tips coming out. I have uh, why, why my shrimp die. I have some other stuff in there you know, the normal stuff, my shrimp feedings, all that. It's still coming just at a slightly slower rate maybe. If you watched my update video, which you should go watch all my videos. <laughs> Anyways, remember guys, keep your shrimp pan strong. Till next time, bye bye now. So I thought it would be a good idea to make a series of videos on the the, hmm. So I thought it was a pretty good, oh my. <clears throat> and today we're gonna kick it off with just your basic ram's horn snail. Let's check it out. Fuck. Welcome back to Bob Moss Nano Tanks. So as I said in the intro, today we're gonna be talking about, why did I blank there? Welcome back to Bob, welcome back to Bob Moss Nano Tanks. Oh my. While they prefer, <clears throat> oh my God. Technically all my tanks are hard water, but oh, sorry camera went out of focus there yeah the snails oh my god shit <laughs> god damn they're um uh uh um i think i think that's it